Hey guys, what's up? It's Kevin Troff, and today we're going to be looking at my IKEA desk hack setup, featuring the IKEA Salgen countertop and two Alex drawers. Usually in these popular IKEA desk hack setups, people mostly use the Carlby countertop, but I opted for the Salgen instead. The Salgen is way more affordable, coming in at only $70 for the 188 by 65 by 3.8 cm version, compared to $180 for a Carlby with the same dimensions. After putting together my desk with Alex drawers on each side, I think the final result came out together well. I have plenty of desk space for my triple monitor setup, my personal laptop, my work laptop, and my peripherals. The depth of the desk allows me to push back my three 1080p monitors to a good distance. This was an issue for me on my previous desk where the depth was too short, which meant that the monitors were too close to my eyes, making the sharpness at 1080p look much worse. The increased desk depth is also helpful with allowing me to have things like books or my laptop directly in front of the main monitor, without having to move my keyboard and mouse somewhere that it is inaccessible. The Salgen countertop itself is quite hefty in weight, inspiring confidence in the build quality. The surface looks and feels great, and seems very durable. It is, after all, intended to be used as a kitchen countertop. I have this countertop sitting on top of two white Alex drawers, which give me a lot of room for organization, support the countertop sturdily, and complete the aesthetic. The chair that I'm using is an IKEA Marcus with armrests. I initially wanted to go for the Yarfile chair, but that was out of stock. Many people online said that they liked the Marcus's seat better and that the two chairs are very similar, so I got the Marcus instead, and I find it very comfortable for me. Back support and tension is good, so I can sit on this all day and not have any back pain, unlike some previous desk chairs I've had from Wayfair. On top of the desk, I have a large 800x300x3mm mouse pad that I bought off Amazon for 15 bucks. I wanted a mouse pad of this size so that I could have plenty of space for my mouse and plus protect the area of the desk that will be seeing the most contact or movement on its surface in order to prevent any scratches or usage marks appearing over time. On top of the mouse pad, I have a Red Dragon K552 mechanical keyboard with Cherry MX Blue equivalent switches and a Razer Mamba wireless mouse. Both are capable of RGB, but I've completely disabled it on the mouse and I've got the keyboard in reactive RGB mode with just the color red. The Red Dragon K552 is a great keyboard that I've had for about a year. In the beginning when I bought it, it had very loud resonance sounds with each key press, but after a month or so of use, it quietened down significantly and hasn't been a problem since. I've had my Razer Mamba for almost 4 years now. It's still a great mouse with excellent tracking and latency, but occasionally it can be a little glitchy. Battery life is still good enough to last me a full day of use though. Below the center monitor are two satellite speakers and one subwoofer under the desk. These speakers are the Creative A220 2.1 speakers. I got these speakers for around $30 almost 10 years ago, and I'm still using them. The system can produce a meager 9 watts of output, which is a far cry from the 30, 40, 60 watt RMS of output that even cheap Logitech speakers come with today. But despite that, the speakers are still decent and sound good for things like movies, TV shows, gaming, YouTube, etc. And the subwoofer definitely helps out with the low end. But unfortunately, the speakers can't get as loud as I'd want. And for music production, I really can't rely on the sound quality these speakers put out, so I do all my music production on my ATH M40X headphones. Speaking of the ATH M40X headphones, they're hidden underneath the desk, just above the subwoofer. They're connected directly to my desktop, and I can hang my headphones here for easy access when I'm done using them. I absolutely love these headphones. Excellent sound quality and build quality for a very good price. I've done a review on them on this channel, so if you'd like to learn more about it in depth, you can check that out. At the main focal point of this desk, I have three IPS 60Hz 1080p monitors, with the rightmost one in vertical orientation. I find the extra screen real estate very useful for productivity work such as coding, video editing, music production, writing, and more. Colors, contrast, and saturation are also pretty good on these three displays, and at this distance, thanks to the depth of the desk, sharpness isn't an issue either. Both the center and the rightmost vertical displays have an integrated USB hub. Using only the vertical display's USB hub, I've connected all my peripherals and accessories, including my webcam, speakers, mouse, and keyboard, so that I can quickly swap all my peripherals between my work laptop and my personal desktop. My personal desktop has an i7-4770 non-K on a Z87 Asus Maximus VI Gene motherboard, 28 gigs of RAM, an MSI Radeon 5700 XT, a 512 GB Samsung 860 Evo SATA SSD, and one terabyte hard drive, built inside of a Corsair Carbide 275R case. I have both Windows 10 and Mac OS Catalina installed in dual boot, occasionally using Mac OS for things like Final Cut Pro. This machine originally had an i5-4570, 8 gigs of RAM, a Radeon Sapphire 7850, and a different HTPC case when it was given to me. It was originally being used by my parents as an HTPC machine. 
My parents upgraded to a Ryzen 5 2600X on an X470F ASUS motherboard with an EVGA GTX 1070, 16 gigs of G-Skill Trident Z 3200 MHz RAM, and a Kingston A1000 M.2 NVMe SSD as their HTPC machine. So I got this old one. Luckily, one of my friends also upgraded their gaming rig to an i7 8700K based system, so he gave me his i7 4770 and old RAM sticks. I also got a Hyper 212 EVO CPU cooler for free from another friend who wasn't using it. GPU wise, I had originally upgraded the Sapphire Sony 50 to a Vega 56, which unfortunately gave me continuous issues. Luckily, after I contacted MSI about it, they replaced it with a 5700 XT, which has been awesome. Even though the desktop's 2014 Haswell i7 4770 is considered an aging platform by now, it still has plenty of power and life left in it. This desktop has been very stable for me, and the CPU is still great for gaming and productivity. My secondary personal machine is my personal laptop, an XPS 15 9570. My XPS 15 is equipped with an i7 8750H 6-core 12-thread CPU, a GTX 1050 Ti Max-Q, 16 gigs of RAM, 97 watt hour battery, 512 gigs NVMe SSD, and a 4K IPS touchscreen. That completes my setup tour. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below, and I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks guys, and see you later.